Hey, what is up guys? This is Bo or Carl Hunga 712 and thanks for stopping by today. We're going to do our uh, Madden 22 uh, State of the Franchise, of course with the Minnesota Vikings. Um, I'm hoping to do some more of these this year. Um, last year I mostly played as Minnesota, um, did play as a few other teams that you guys recommended, but mostly with Minnesota, but I'd like to know in the comment section if you guys have some other ideas of some teams you wouldn't mind seeing me uh, take through the franchise mode and you know, make some changes and stuff and see if we can get them to the Super Bowl. Uh, let me know in the comments. Also, if you're if you're new here, hit that subscribe button. I upload Madden content uh, as often as I can. Love Madden. Been playing Madden ever since, God, it was on the uh, Super Nintendo uh, 95 or something, I think is might, might have been when I started playing it. But uh, And if you're also curious kind of how my content is, um, check out the playlist on my channel. I've got a playlist from... Um, last year's Madden, so uh, Madden 21 franchise videos. I've got quite a few, so like I said, if you're interested in that, um, definitely check that out. But I figured we'd kind of go through each position. Um, I'll kind of show you uh, kind of how everybody's ranked. Uh, I, I made some signings also in free agency, and basically this will kind of be the team going forward. Uh, anyway, starting off at uh, quarterback, we got, of course, Cousins and Mond. Um, I don't know yet if I'll carry three quarterbacks. If I do, it'll probably be Nate Stanley uh, that I carry. Obviously, if you guys watched some videos last year, you'll see that uh, I brought Stanley in quite a bit in uh, later in games and stuff to get him, get his uh, attributes up a little bit. And obviously, being a big Hawkeye fan, uh, obviously Nate Stanley played for him for a number of years, so um, that's why I usually keep him on the roster. Um, I will say on a side note here, I feel like Cousins is vastly underrated um only a 79 he's got just a 77 awareness um just an average arm i've always thought cousins had a pretty good arm um obviously his throwing accuracy ratings his short and deep accuracy are pretty good that's going to be more towards the top of the league uh but i think he's vastly underrated here at a 79 i just, I've, I've always thought Cousins was kind of underrated up in Minnesota. I know he's, you know, it seems like with Cousins, you either love him or you don't. Uh, with us Viking fans, I'm one of the, I'm on one of the sides that actually likes Cousins, but uh, um, we'll, we'll see this year. I'm kind of curious to see as we play tougher opponents, just how he plays, obviously, with the lower rating this year. He was like an 82 last year, so they, he's dropped a few points. Uh, Kellen Mond, um, as you guys have watched in the preseason, or if you're any Viking fans in here, he hasn't had the strongest of preseason, but, uh, you know, he's a young guy. We'll see over time if they can develop him into a starter, if he'll just kind of be backup material for a number of years and maybe trade him down the road for something. Uh, but he's got a low awareness rating of 68, uh, what, one point higher on throwing power, and, you know, a decent short accuracy rating, so... You know, if Mond had to come in, I think, during the year, it probably wouldn't be terrible, but I actually still may look at maybe signing a backup. But but like I said, we'll see. We get, I, I think we'd be fine with Mond and Stanley going forward. Um, on the running back side, obviously, Delvin Cook, one of the best in the league. Um, played well with him last, uh, last year on uh, my Madden franchise. Um, obviously, Peterson was in the uh, free agency, so I, I of course I got to sign AP back to Minnesota. It, you know, it's cool having him here. You know, decent rating, 78. You know, obviously the speed rating is going to be down. Still a good awareness rating, good carry rating. You know, f break tackle is pretty fair in trucking. So, you know, just a good, you know, kind of shorter yardage guy. Or, you know, if Cook goes down, which obviously that's Cook's biggest fault is his ability to stay healthy. Um, so we definitely have two running backs that are capable of kind of holding down the fort uh, if Cook ever gets hurt. Obviously, Alexander Madison, he's been pretty damn good as a backup running back since he's come to Minnesota. Obviously, Cook's more of a, uh, you know, left-to-right runner, whereas M Madison's more of a, you know, north-to-south. Like I said, Cook's more of an east-to-west guy. Uh, but actually, Cook, I guess, can run through you, too. He is pretty pretty good at breaking tackles. Obviously, you can see by his 96 rating. But uh, definitely don't have a problem with Madison. And then, obviously, we have Abdullah and... Uh, Kenne, I, I guess I've, <laughs> I still haven't heard his name pronounced yet, um, but uh, definitely be somebody to watch for as a rookie. Um, if if I have to make a cut here, I'm, I'll probably take Abdullah out and uh, keep our rookie there. Obviously, C.J. Ham, solid fullback, has been ever since he's been up in Minnesota. Great blocker, can you know get you a few yards here and there, and can catch the ball out of the backfield. Uh, so nothing big there. 
obviously Minnesota here, um, the big thing with the Vikes is they've got a couple of the best receivers in football in Thielen and Justin Jefferson. Of course, the bad thing with Minnesota is they don't have a lot of depth behind these two guys. And obviously, that as you guys can see here, I did sign Larry Fitzgerald as my slot receiver. Um, again, you know, a reliable guy, not a lot of speed, but I mean, look at that catch rating, 98. Um, so definitely, I think he'll fit in great in the slot. Um, like I said, that's obviously Minnesota's biggest fault is, you know, if one of these two guys go down, there's not a hell of a lot behind them. Um, like you said, you saw in the, if you watched the last video, D.D. Westbrook caught a nice pass from Mond in preseason, scored a touchdown. We've got B.B. and, and Smith-Marset here, um, again, another guy from Iowa, so that was nice to see. Uh, so we got some guys to develop in the in the back there, but just in case, you know, like I said, I went out and signed Fitz, uh, you know, I, I don't think you can go wrong there, um, having a reliable target in the slot. Um, at uh, tight end, obviously, you know, Minnesota got rid of one of my favorite targets, as you guys probably saw who watched uh, my series last year. Um, really loved Kyle Rudolph, always a dependable target, great hands, spectacular catch and everything. But we got the young guy taking over here, Irv Smith, kind of excited to see what I can do with him. Obviously, he has a bit more speed, a um, little bit more athletic than uh, Rudolph, but I do like your, you know, big, reliable tight ends. Yeah, they might not be fast, they might not be shifty, but, you know, can't go wrong with them. Obviously, behind Smith, though, we don't have a lot. Um, I, I know Conklin, I think I had a decent year with him last year, and, and he has a decent rating, too, though, of, at 80. You know, not, not the fastest guy with the speed, a little under 80 there, but, you know, probably, again, with their catch uh, rating, uh, ratings, I, I think I should be fine behind Irv Smith. Uh, Minnesota's offensive line, that's obviously a big, big problem especially you'll see later when we play really good teams with a good pass rush. But they did try to sh uh, shore things up, obviously, here with Derisaw. Um, that was their big first-round pick this year. We'll see if he can get healthy. I know he's had some, some injury issues during training camp, so we'll see in, you know, in real football if he can do that. But, uh, you know, 71 rating is not terrible. Obviously, if he goes down, you know, we don't have the best of backups. So uh, hopefully he can stay healthy and... You know, again, work his way up, you know, raise those attributes over time. Ezra Cleveland, he, he played pretty well for Minnesota last year, and and in my Madden franchise, too, he, he played quite well. So, um, you know, again, 70 rating is not the, not the best, but, you know, it could be a hell, hell of a lot worse. Obviously, if he goes down, you don't, want, you don't really want Samia or, or Dozier coming in, but, uh, you know, we might look to the free agency to add some more people. Uh, Bradbury, you know, he's been hit or miss at times. He's he's had some good games. He's had some bad ones. Um, but, you know, pretty much rating at 80, you know, that's pretty solid. He's going to be a solid center. Um, so I'm not too worried there. Again, you know, our backup's okay at center. So I think we'd be okay there. As we get over here in the right guard position, though, this is probably one I'm going to have to look to upgrade in free agency because, of six, uh, you know, having a starting... Uh, right guard at 64. That's going to be kind of tough. Uh, like I said, especially when you get uh, when you go up against some better defensive lines. So Udo uh, probably going to have to upgrade him. I mean, I got some young guys here that actually, you know, if I was to start the franchise now, because I'm still in preseason, I'll have a video up for you guys here shortly, maybe tomorrow or the next day of uh, <clears throat> the last preseason game. Maybe I'll start Wyatt if I can't make a signing or improve that. Uh, that position in free agency. And of course, Minnesota's best offensive lineman, or arguably their best, I, I would say he's their best, Brian O'Neill. Uh, again, solid rating. You know, he's been going up each year, so I, I expect him to continue to go up, but, you know, he's probably their most dependable, solid tackle. Again, if he goes down, um, it's going to be pretty scary here with the ratings in the 50s, so that might be something. Again, so offensive line wise, I, it will probably be a little better than last year, but. Uh, again, probably going to need to look for some depth, uh, depth possibly in uh, free agency. Um, get, getting out to left end here, um, Daniil Hunter. Obviously, on the game, he'll be a menace this year with a 90 rating, one of the best pass rushers in football. Of course, in real football, we'll see. Um, you know, because he missed all of last year with uh, with an injury. So, um, Minnesota's pass rush—that'll be the biggest question in actual football on here. Though I think it might be all right. 
Um, on the right end, you'll see that uh, we got Weatherly at a 72. I might go out and try to sign Efferson Griffin, which Minnesota actually did um, in the NFL here this uh, was this last week. So I might add Everson Griffin to the uh, roster here. That'll help a little bit, add some depth um, on the right side. Um, and then obviously we get to defensive tackles here. I think this is actually going to be one of Minnesota's stronger suits here because you got Michael Pierce who's going to uh, clog up the middle. He's going to be a great run stopper. And you've got a couple guys here that might be able to add a little to the pass rush. Obviously Sheldon Richardson, Richardson was here a few years ago and then came back. So, you know, again, solid ratings here. Obviously Pierce elite with, you know, rating over a 90. And then uh, two sol really solid defensive tackles here at 81 and 82. So I think defensive tackle were going to be perfectly fine. Uh, linebackers also possible weakness. Obviously, you got Anthony Barr here. I, I think utilized better on this game as a pass rusher. He can drop back and, and play some some soft zone coverage, but uh, probably going to be best if you know you're bringing him up the middle or you know you know putting some pressure on the quarterback. Get a good rating, uh, good speed rating, good awareness rating, uh, solid tackler. So I th I think he'll definitely excel more in that role so you might see some more linebacker blitzes out of me obviously one of the best linebackers in football here at middle linebacker eric kendricks again elite uh rating at 90 again like a lot of other positions if he was to go down um these backups are going to be a little a little on the rough side so uh, we might look for some more depth in uh in the free agency of course right outside linebacker we got Nick Vigil out here with the 72. Actually, Cameron Smith just retired, um, unfortunately. So, but uh, obviously, since I started the franchise after or uh, before his retirement, he's he's still on here. Um, and then, of course, you got Sarad here, um, a rookie. Hopefully, we can build him up over the season. And then, if I play a couple of seasons here, we'll see how he goes. Uh, but again, a 72. You know, again, it's going to be okay. Uh, not great, not awful. So, like I said, again, similar to some of the other positions, we'll probably look to possibly add a little depth. But, you know, there's there's only so much money you could spend, obviously, and Minnesota's got a lot tied up. Uh, this will be an interesting position because last year uh, during the franchise, I was able to pick up, what, God, what was it? I picked up Logan Ryan and Aqib Tlaib in uh, free agency, and they, were, they turned out to be a couple of the best corners in football uh, during my run. Um, with the Vikes, of course, this year we don't have that uh, in free agency. I, th I believe um, Richard uh, Sherman's in the in free agency, so um, I could po potentially look to uh, put him alongside uh, Peterson. I haven't decided yet on um, having either having Dantzler out there or having. Uh, Rashad Breland out there. I might put Breland out there. I'm not for sure yet. Um, I think Mac Alexander is always best in the <clears throat> play in the slot. But uh, Patrick Peterson, he was he's always been one of my favorite players in the league. I think at one time he might have been might have been the best uh, corner in football. Lots of speed, very athletic. Obviously, he's had a couple of down years out in the desert. Coming back to Minnesota. Um, you know, I'm, I'm kind of interested to see not only how he does in franchise, but in, actual, in the actual games. But uh, this this position here is going to uh, kind of tell a lot about how we perform this year. I always try to build up my corners. So if I'm not able to do that in free agency and I'm not happy with uh, how they're playing, I, I might uh, execute a trade. But uh, kind of like to know in the comments, you know, uh, what you guys have done uh, with some of your corners. But, you know, 81, again, solid rating, not going to have any problems there. But when you start to get down in these lower 70 ratings and you're playing really good teams um, with good receivers, you're going to be forced to play a lot of zone or really rely on your pass rush. And um, like I said, we're going to oh, didn't mean to do that, but. We're going to have to uh, see basically how that turns out because uh, we might have to sign some players or maybe do some trades. Minnesota's stronger points, probably their safeties on defense. Xavier Woods here at 76, and he's got a ratings increase uh, with how he's been playing. So, again, that's going to be a pretty solid rating, just about an 80. Um, probably if he has a couple more good weeks, you know, he might be able to push that closer to 80. I'm not too worried about that. Um, of course, Minnesota is probably their, arguably their best player on defense, Harrison Smith, here at a 92. 
and again ratings increase so I'm not too worried there again you worry a little bit about depth here but again you know there, we've got so many positions that that lack depth um, we're gonna have to definitely look into free agency to see you know maybe can we improve that or you know are we gonna have to make some trades somewhere too but I think you just kind of roll roll with it and see uh, you know kind of deal with injuries as they come you know try to try to prepare for them but uh, they're probably gonna happen obviously Minnesota's got a new kicker this year with Greg Joseph um, obviously Dan Bailey struggled uh, for Minnesota over the last couple of years so they parted ways with him um, I didn't have any problems with kicking with Bailey last year in the franchise so I, I don't expect to have too many problems with Joseph and obviously Brenton Cole quit he's you know he's pretty solid again 74 uh, punters and kickers are a little different um, you know, now in Madden compared to how they used to be. Uh, you used to have punters and kickers that used to be rated pretty damn high, like in the 90s and high 90s, but you really don't have that anymore. I was going to see there if I could pull up the whole NFL. But, yeah, kickers and punters on these games just aren't aren't too crazy. But anyways, I wanted to do, like I said, a, uh, a video here kind of showing you guys the whole roster you know basically the state of the franchise how minnesota's looking going into this madden season uh some of the moves i've made already that i think will help the team out and some potential moves i'm still looking at before uh, i finish this last preseason game and uh, move into the season but i'd like to know in the comment section again guys how your uh how your franchises are looking you know what teams are you setting up and you know, to get some recommendations for some teams I try, maybe other than Minnesota. Um, but I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thanks for stopping by. I really appreciate it. Uh, like I said, I should have that next preseason and the last preseason game out here uh, pretty soon. And then we'll have to make a decision to see if I need to uh, trade for some players or, uh, like I said, upgrade corner or uh, some other spots on the offensive line or the defense. But uh, thanks for watching, guys, and we'll see you next video. Have a good one.